Did you grab it? Hello, welcome to TC Weekly Live. We are your hosts, LZ. And return to brighten your day, the boy. As we get going, we are your source for news, entertainment, and all the activities happening on campus. We have an okay show full of all right talent and a dash of creativity. Now that we cast out the line, let's get real. Dang. Race finders, rolling. Welcome to this episode of Phrase Finders, where we uncover the origins of some well-used, and in today's case, some not so well-used phrases in the English language. I'm your host, Evan Lloyd. Today's phrase is, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, maybe you've heard this phrase before, maybe you haven't, but the origin story is fascinating nonetheless. This proverb was used when intending to pass on a bit of wisdom telling someone not to throw out something potentially valuable with all of the other invaluable things you may be throwing away. The first mention of this proverb in history is from a German book from the 1500s entitled Appeal to Fools. In it, it included a wood carving picture of a woman dumping a pail of water that had a baby inside. Although the authenticity of this phrase's origins are disputed, one of the popular theories is that it comes from the bathing habits of people during the medieval times. It was said that back then, people only bathed once a year, and entire families used the same tub of water to bathe in. As was custom, the man would bathe first, followed by his wife, and followed by the children in order of age, meaning the baby would bathe last. By the time the baby would bathe, the water would be so black and dirty and disgusting that it would be possible to forget the baby was in there and throw the baby out with the disgusting bath water. Tongue planted firmly in cheek, I'm sure. Today, this is a bit of advice you would give someone when they were moving or cleaning out a basement or an attic, telling them to take extra caution when throwing things out. Although it'd be easy and efficient to just take everything that looks like junk and throw it away, 
you'd want to warn someone, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, meaning don't risk throwing out something valuable with all your other invaluable things. Thanks for watching and join us again next week as we uncover the origins of more phrases. Did I say let's get real? I meant let's get started with phrase finders. By the way, that is a small bucket. I have nothing to add about this one. Looks like Charlie is still in the midst of recovery. We will go easy on him tonight. Perfectly posed, we'll be back soon. Time to get real. All right, you've been waiting. The moment has come. It's time for the show. To start it off, Facebook. Facebook has been collecting user data and giving away to whoever it wants. Sparking a movement, hashtag delete Facebook. According to The Guardian, 50 million Facebook users had their data reached in 2014 by political data firm Cambridge Analytica that has ties to Donald Trump. Sheesh. Moving on. After being appointed as Elon Musk's greatest inspiration at SXSW earlier this week, Kanye West appears to be looking for some inspiration of his own by voyaging back to the undisclosed mountaintop in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where he's reportedly recording more music. In addition to following the birth of his third child, Kanye has been spotted in this area alongside a cohort of longtime collaborators, uh, which include rappers, songwriters, and producers. The list of collaborators spotted among Yeezy include Nas, Mike Dean, Travis Scott, Kid Cudi, The Dream, Pierre Bourne, Qu King Louis, Jeff Basker, Wheezy, and Drake. Now, on to Brennan. Cryptocurrency Monero, ticker symbol XMR, experienced a hard fork on April 6th, splitting the coin into four different coins. Monero Original, Monero Classic, Monero Classic XML, and Monero Zero. All of these coins are still on the same blockchain, but somehow they managed to get different names. The original Monero is the only one on the new blockchain. The hard fork was unanimously agreed upon in the community in hopes of improving the proof-of-work protocol behind Monero, making the coin more resistant to ASIC mining. Now on to movies with Elizabeth Rose Helen Stino. This week at the box office, we have a thriller in the number one spot. A Quiet Place shut out the weekend with just over $50,200,000. Fun fact, director John Kurzinski, whom you might recognize from the US version of The Office, plays the father, while Emily Blunt, who is actually Kurzinski's wife in real life, plays his wife in the movie. A Quiet Place is about a family who must stay quiet or else a mysterious monster will come and get them. This movie maintains a very eerie energy throughout the film. That's it for this episode. Catch us again next week for another episode of Get Real. LZ out. Man, do I miss that show. Me too, man. Before we keep going, let's talk about TC events. Tomorrow, Wednesday, April 18th, 2018, of the 21st century, is $200 day. Your chance to find big, fake cash around campus. 
$100 will be hidden in the morning and another $100 in the afternoon. Just add cheddar down to student involvement to get the real deal. Clues will be posted on the NWTC student involvement page the day of. Stay woke. Also, this Thursday, April 19th, celebrate Earth Day with succulent planters and henna body art. Don't wait to get your, <laughs> don't wait to get your new green friend. There will be free make and take succulent planters. <laughs> <laughs> Starting at 10 a.m. until supplies last in Campus Commons. Well, I suppose time for expose. Ow. Hey guys, welcome to Expo. <laughs> <laughs> oh In this episode. That's trash. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Expo. <laughs> My name is Claire Kartz and today's episode is going to be about Netflix original series called Everything Sucks. This show takes place in boring Oregon in the 90s with the two main characters being Luke a freshman at Boring High, and Kate, the principal's daughter. This show features the outcast stories of Kate and Luke as they go through the ups and downs of high school. It features a complicated and progressive love story, as well as the nostalgia from the 90s. The show was released February 16, 2018. So far, there's been one season that has 10 episodes. At a length of about 25 minutes, they're pretty great for binging. The target audience for this show is kind of across the board because with the 90s nostalgia, it reaches out to the audience that, you know, actually lived through the 90s and maybe even went to high school during that, during that time frame. But then it also reaches out to kids who are currently in high school, probably even more so than the 90s draw, um, just because it deals with Kate and what she's going through, as well as Luke and what he's going through, which is most relatable to kids in high school. Though going along with that, there is a scene of nudity, uh, just a forewarning for anyone planning to watch it. Did like the show, I wasn't totally engrossed by it, although I would recommend it to, you know, someone high school aged who, you know, maybe is going through a tough time just to relate to it. That brought, wait, that brought back some memories of the 90s I don't have. I need to get me one of those VHS cams. Hashtag obsolete. I agree. Seems like a solid investment for antique furniture decor. Right, 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 right. Well, it's time to get nifty. With Bit Nifty. I have no idea what that movie is about, but I feel like taking a trip out to Vegas. 
because sharks don't sleep. Couldn't agree more. Well, looks like we have reached the end of our show today and want to wish everyone a good week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at DMTNWTC. See ya.